Chapter Three of Lotus Buds. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne. Lotus Buds by Amy Wilson Carmichael. Chapter Three: The Scamp. Pat a cake is a thing of the past, but the stage from the highest point of view is still distinctly attractive. So decided Chalalu and resolved to devote herself thenceforth to this new and engrossing pursuit. She chose the scene of her first public performance without consulting us. It was the open floor of the church, on a Sunday morning, in the midst of a large congregation. This is how it happened. Chalalu's Atai, who in those days was unaware of all the painful surprises in store, had taken her to morning service, and allowed her to sit beside her on the mat at the back of the church. All through the first part of the service, Chalalu was good, and as the sermon began, she was forgotten. In our church we sit on the floor, men on one side, women and children on the other, a broad aisle is left between, and the ayer, Mr. Walker, refusing to be boxed up in the usual manner, walks up and down as he preaches. This interested Chalalu. That morning the sermon was to children, and the subject was girdles. The east of this ancient India is the east to which the prophet spoke by a parable and picture, and, following that time-worn path, the preacher pictured the parable of Jeremiah's linen girdle. The attention of the people was riveted upon him, and no one noticed what was happening on the mat at the end of the church. Only we, up at the front with all the other children, saw, without being able to stop it, the dreadful pantomime. For Chalalu, wholly absorbed and pleased with this unexpected delight, first stood on the mat and acted the girdle picture. Then, growing bolder, advanced out into the open aisle, and, following the preacher's gestures, reproduced them all exactly. It was a moment of tension, but if ever a child had a good angel in attendance, Chalalu has, for something always stops her before the bitter end. I forgot what stopped her then something invisible and so doubtless the angel but we did not breathe freely till we had her safe at home chalalu's visible angel is the gentle esli a young convert helper of a meek and lowly disposition at first sight nothing seems more unsuitable for chalalu needs a firm hand but firmness without wisdom would have been disastrous so as we had not the perfect combination we chose the less dangerous virtue and gave the nursery scamp to the gentlest of us all. Sometimes, to tell the whole unromantic truth, we have been afraid lest Esli was spilling emotion in vain upon this graceless soul, and we have suggested an exchange of angels, but somehow it has never come to pass. Once we almost did it, for a noise past all bounds called us down to the nursery, and we found the cause of it in a huddled heap in the corner. Chalalu, what's the matter? only the softest of sobs heard in the silence that followed our advent and one round shoulder heaved and the curly head went down on the arm in an attitude of woe now this was not chalalu's way at all soft sobbing was not in her line and i turned to the twenty-nine children now prancing about in unholy glee and they shouted the explanation oh she is esli akal she was very exceedingly naughty she would not come when Akal called. She raced round the room so fast that Akal could not catch her, and then she jumped out of her kumasu, the single small garment worn, and ran out into the garden. And Esli Akal sat down in the corner and cried, and Chalalu is Esli Akal. But the pet opportunity in those days was when some freak of manner in friend or visitor suggested a new game. We used to wish, sometimes, that these kind people understood how much pleasure they were giving to the artless babe who was studying them with such interest, while they, all unconscious of their real use, imagined probably she was thinking of nothing more serious than sweets. After an hour in the bungalow, Chalalu would wander off, apparently because she was tired of us, but really because she was full of a new and original idea and wanted an audience. Once she puzzled the nursery community who had not been visiting the bungalow, by mincing about on pointed toes, with shoulders shrugged like a dancing master in caricature. The babies thought this a very nice game, and for weeks they played it industriously. Chilalu talked late. 
she has long ago made up for lost time but she was never at a loss for an answer to a question which could be answered by action who is in the nursery now we asked her one afternoon when she had escaped before the tea bell that trumpet of jubilee to the nursery had rung she smiled and sat down slowly and then sighed another sigh and she proceeded to perform her toilette when the small hands went up to the head with an action of decorously swinging the black hair up and coiling it into a loose knot and when a spasmodic shake suggested it must be done over again there was no doubt as to who was in charge none but the excellent pakiam one of our earlier workers ever did things quite like this no one else was so ponderous no one sighed in that middle-aged manner no one but pakiam we never could blame pakiam for chellalu's escape as well blame a mature cat for the escapades of her kitten chellalu watching for a clue as to her fate would sigh again profoundly it was never easy to return her we were not sorry when this phase passed into something safer for herself though perhaps not so charming to the public chellalu at two and three quarters had surgical ambitions medical work she considered slow she liked operations her first as far as we know was performed upon the unwilling eye of a smaller and weaker sister lie down she had commanded and the patient had lain down open your eyes at this point the victim realized what she was in for and her howls brought deliverance but not before chellalu had agitated the baby's head in a firm grasp between her knees and holding the screwed-up eye wide open with one hand was proceeding to drop in medicine with the other mercifully the medicine was water thwarted in this direction chellalu applied herself to bandaging she would persuade someone to lend her a finger or a toe the owner was assured it was sore very sore she would then proceed to bandage it to the best of her ability but all this was mere play what chellalu's soul yearned for was a real knife even only a needle provided it would prick and cause red blood to flow oh to be allowed to operate properly as grown-up people do chellalu had seen them do it she had seen thorns extracted from little bare feet and small sores dressed and it had deeply interested her the difficulty was no one would offer a limb she walked up and down the nursery one morning with a bit of old milk tin very jagged and sharp and inviting and secreted in her curls was a long bright darning needle but though she took so much trouble to prepare no one would give her a chance to perform and chellalu was disgusted someone who did not know her suggested she should perform on herself this disgusted her still more do doctors perform on themselves chellalu's last phase introduces the kindergarten for an educational comrade perceiving our defects in this direction furnished a kindergarten for us and gave us a kind push-off into these pleasant waters so the little boats sailed gaily and the children at least are content chellalu has never been so keen about this institution as the other babies are do you like the kindergarten someone asked her the other day and she answered with her usual decision yes no we thought she was talking at random and tested her by questions about things which we knew she liked or disliked but she was never caught well then don't you like the kindergarten yes no it was evident she knew what she meant and said it exactly bits of it she likes other bits of it she thinks might be improved the trouble is that she has an objection to sitting in the same place for more than a minute at longest other babies steady mature things of five are already evolving quite orderly sentences in english the language in which the kindergarten is partly taught and we feel they are getting on chellalu never stops long enough to evolve anything and yet she seems to be doing a little from the first week she has talked all she knew in an unabashed fashion good morning very much was an early production and it was followed by many oddments forgotten now but comical in effect at the time which perhaps may explain the otherwise inexplicable fact that she sometimes learns something one of those early dashes into the unexplored land is remembered because it enriched us with a new synonym it was at afternoon tea that a sympathetic city the word means mother's younger sister knowing that chellalu had received something thoroughly well earned asked her in english what did amal give you this morning chellalu caught at the one familiar word in the sentence 
for babies learn the names of the flowers in the garden before they are troubled with lesser matters and she answered brightly morning glory so the morning glory has become to us an alias for smacks this same morning glory is the subject of one of the kindergarten songs for after searching through two or three hundred pages of nursery rhymes and interviewing many proper kindergarten songs we found few that belonged to the indian baby's world and so we had to make them for ourselves these songs are about the flowers and the birds and other simple things and are twittered by the tiniest with at least some intelligence which at present is as much as we can wish all the babies sing to the flowers but it is chellalu who gives them surprises one day we saw her standing under a bamboo arch covered with her favorite morning glory she had two smaller babies with her one on either side ama look she called but italics are inadequate to express the emphasis look morning glory kissing chother and she pointed with eagerness to the nestling little clusters of lilac growing as their pretty manner is close to each other then seizing each of the babies in a fervent and somewhat embarrassing embrace she hugged and kissed them both and finally wheeling round on the flowers addressed them impressively for all loving little indian children want to be like you End of chapter 3